morning, Brian. Yes, I think we are ready to start. Great. Uh, can everyone see me? Yeah. Great. Um, well, yes, uh, Excellencies, Lords, uh, Members of Parliament, ladies, distinguished guests, and, um, and in particular our, our new BBA fellows, um, I'd like to welcome you all uh, to this the fourth uh, blockchain international scientific conference. My name is Brian Scudder. I'm the new Deputy Secretary of the British Blockchain Association. Um, it's uh, it's been a, a, a fascinating year or so since our, our last conference. Um, very intense for, for many people around the world, but also particularly exciting, I think, in the blockchain space. Um, there's um, been so many developments over the last the last year um, in the space that um, it's shown a, a, a genuine acceleration um, in the blockchain arena. Um, and, and that's allowed a, a, an amazing evolution of organizations that represent the space like ours at the BBA. Um, it's um, so a particular warm welcome to, to everybody. Um, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Nassim, um, who is the president of the BBA. Um, he's also the editor-in-chief, uh, founder, uh, editor-in-chief of the uh, uh, Journal of the BBA, uh, and uh, uh, is lead of the uh, UK roadmap, blockchain roadmap. Um, so Nassim, if you would uh, open the session for us. Thank you, Brian. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hello and welcome to the fourth Blockchain International Scientific Conference. Uh, I am Professor Naseem Nakwi, your conference chair and the president of the BBA. The theme of this year's conference is expanding the possibilities, exceeding the vision. And it is a fact that we are uh, faced, as Brian said before, we are faced with exceptional challenges. And exceptional challenges require exceptional capabilities and exceptional resilience. The last 24 months, we, we have been, um, we have lived through uh, a global pandemic, some extraordinary times. Uh, the pandemic is far from over yet. And now we are witnessing a horrific war in, uh, in Ukraine, which will no doubt have uh, far reaching consequences for uh, most global economies. And we hope and pray for an end uh, to this war as soon as possible. And we send our thoughts and love to all those who are directly or indirectly affected uh, by this crisis. So the conference uh, hashtag is ISC2022. We are on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Medium, and other social media platforms. So please do not forget to tag the BBA if you want to tweet or post about the conference and we will make sure we'll reshare your posts. There is also a special prize for the most active participant of the conference based on active engagement during the conference, networking, etc. So please do uh, utilize that opportunity. I would like to thank all our academic advisory board and general editorial board uh, for their contributions with uh, timely peer reviews, which helped us in the organization of this conference. I would also like to thank our sponsors, Equidium Health and Enterprise Ethereum Alliance for their support of the conference. And thank you once again for uh, being a part of the ISC. Brian, you are okay to introduce Martin, yeah? Brian, you're on mute. Sorry, yeah. Brian, you're on, on mute. We couldn't hear you. Yes, it gives me my great pleasure to, uh, to, to introduce the Right Honourable Martin Doherty-Hughes, um, 
Uh, he is uh, chair of the All Party Parliamentary Group on Blockchain, a uh, member of parliament for West Dunbartonshire, uh, and a lead contributor to the UK blockchain roadmap, which I, I mentioned over earlier. Um, uh, Martin, I'd be grateful if you could uh, share your insights on on the last year's uh, efforts in the blockchain space, particularly at a parliamentary level. Well, uh, thank you, Brian, and to Nassim for the kind invitation to join you this morning. I, I do so not from the House of Commons, where I will be later this afternoon, but actually from my home constituency office here in Clydebank in Scotland, uh, from my hometown. Uh, and I hope that you and everyone who's watching today and you know, all colleagues have remained safe uh, and well during these challenging times, especially those who have been impacted by COVID-19. As the chair of the all-party parliamentary group on blockchain, uh, I have to say I don't speak as an expert, but as a legislator who has a <coughs> keen interest, as many of you all know, in how transparency and trust can be rebuilt in both the public and private spheres. And as a democratically elected legislator, I am a critical friend, and I think that's very important, of distributed leisure-like technologies, recognising the profound opportunities which they possess for industries uh, and for society, from the environment to the health sectors, from logistics to sport, from food production to democratic participation. It has innumerable benefits. And of course, <clears throat> in the parliamentary process, that means ensuring that we try and highlight many of those benefits, while at least also being a, a, having a critique of the, some of the challenges. And that's the, the role of the all-party parliamentary group, which is facilitated by the big innovation centre. Now, indeed, uh, much of the work recently has been concentrating on the UK national blockchain roadmap. And, and we see it's a, a framework, at least from my perspective, which sets out a blueprint to devise the state's blockchain roadmap. It's a concise summary of the key recommendations that aim to inspire and reform the UK's DLT landscape, building on the excellent foundational principles set by blockchain academics, industry leaders, policymakers, and communities over the past decade. And I do hope you will have taken time to, to read it before the conference. Now, there are huge opportunities to work across uh, sectors collaboratively to ensure that the positive societal impacts of the differing applications of the technology make a real difference to communities such as mine here in Clydebank and across all of these islands and are not merely for those in the silos of political and economic power. The roadmap I believe challenges us all to set up to step up to the plate uh, and we have also seen uh, recently um, this, not that long ago in 2020 a, a similar call for via the Australian blockchain roadmap for collaboration and wider societal impact to be at the center of the future of blockchain. I think it's also important at this time uh, that we remind ourselves of the challenges posed by the technology and it would be remiss of me not to vocalize those challenges given as Nassim had rightfully said around the uh, illegal invasion of Ukraine by the Russian Federation. There are those who deem the technology as a vanguard of disruptive opportunities. I am afraid disagree and I have and I do reject as a legislator the idea of unfettered uh, approach to regulation not just of the technology but of the varied applications which are built upon it and I've been heartened to hear in recent days the crypto sector especially raise concerns as to how democratically elected legislators can ensure that a swathe of sanctions of the Russian Federation must include a range of applications built on the blockchain, including cryptocurrencies. And I believe this highlights the need, at least from my perspective, for vigorous regulation, not only to enable a level playing field for industry, but to defend the technology from nefarious opportunists who would unwillingly utilize it without concern for the negative impacts on our democratic way of life. I'm afraid from my perspective as a Democrat that the term disruptive technology is for me a mere fallacy which has been used to reduce transparency, undermine trust and the ability of the majority of citizens to gain the most from the technology such as blockchain. We in democratic states, no matter who we are, <clears throat> can no longer abdicate responsibility for our actions and their consequences. We must be resolute that our passion, our 
must be to ensure that our blockchains meet the democratic the demands and the requirements for the continued existence of democracy. We cannot underestimate the challenges we face. And having, I have to say, been born into a world in which democracy was at one point in the minority, I recognise the progress so many nations have made in seeking to build better living conditions and being able to remove governments via the ballot box and not via a coup. And whether you are a programmer, an academic or investor, leading an incubator or a crypto financier using the blockchain, I hope you share my concern that the profound changes we have seen in recent weeks demands we all recognise the needs to ensure that blockchain is fit for purpose, to enable services to be delivered, for businesses to innovate and to enable not disrupt trust or transparency. To do so would be an unpardonable folly. I hope, do hope you agree. I hope that the conference uh, gives you everything that you hope for, that it enables you to meet, to collaborate, discuss, and to ensure that you see blockchain as fit for purpose as we go into the years ahead. I hope you all have a great conference. Thank you very much, uh, Martin, for an excellent uh, um, opening uh, keynote. And um, <clears throat> Brian, um, we have uh, we have a few minutes until the next session. So, um, if there are any questions for uh, Martin, I don't think there are any in the in the chat. So, Martin, we 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 like to say thank you very much again for for joining us today. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and um, please look after yourself. And uh, thank you for all your support of the conference and the British Blockchain Association. Thank you. Pleasure, Asim, and take care, everyone, and stay safe. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering, um, Martin, if I might ask a question myself. Um, the uh, obviously there has been a lot of discussion of late in the uh, in the in the well, the Twitter sphere and elsewhere about President Biden's. Um, executive orders uh, in the United States. I'm just wondering if you have any opinion on, on how that may affect um, the, the DLT space uh, here and around the world. Well, I think the President of the United States has been very clear that there needs to be a robust um, counteract to the aggression of the, the President of the Russian Federation. Uh, that's not the Russian people, though they now do face the challenge uh, of whether or not to acquiesce to this illegal invasion. But in terms of uh, the blockchain sphere, I, I think in terms of the applications of the technology, we now need to be asking ourselves, how are we financing that? Where are we gaining that finance? How is it linked to, at least from my perspective, those who seek to undermine um, the democratic way of life, not just here uh, in the UK, but fundamentally in countries like Ukraine, a sovereign independent state that didn't ask for this. So I think the challenge for us in the blockchain sphere is to say, how are we financing our processes? Who are we engaging? What deliberations are we having? And are we actually challenging ourselves to see where the technology sits in a democratic uh, situation? How does it enhance trust? How does it enhance um, uh, transparency? Uh, whether that be in crypto finance, whether that be in logistics, we really need to start asking ourselves these questions. And I think. Um, a range of individuals in the financial sector specifically are now asking those questions and <clears throat> excuse me, my role as a legislator is to make sure that we're fit for purpose and that Parliament understands that we need to step up to step up to the plate and play our part. And I mean, on, on that note, are you finding that um, the, the DeFi space um, is, is taking up more of your time, more of more of legislators interest in how that affects financial markets? I, I think I need to be very honest. I don't think uh, it does in terms of majority of legislators. I, I think it will now in the next couple of weeks because there has been limited impact on where the, the, the sphere sits in terms of some of the sanctions uh, and in the processes. I think the, it has been left off. Uh, you know, it's kind of fallen away at the end, at the edge. You know, so people haven't realised that we really need to have sanctions network in, in relation to it. So I think maybe in recent weeks ahead, and I know that you've got a minister speaking today, I think the challenge is to the minister to go back to the Treasury and recognise how the, the sphere can play its part. And I have to say, uh, defending democratic institutions, uh, defending the right to national sovereignty, as we have seen which uh, Ukraine is suffering. 
Um, so yeah, I think in the weeks ahead, we will see a bit of a, a change from some of my parliamentary colleagues who maybe come for the first time a, a wee bit more aware of, of, of what's going on. Hmm. No, it's, a, it's an interesting statistics. I mean, this is, this is slightly old now, but the, um, so as separate from the DeFi space, but in terms of mining, for example, um, there was discussion, I was at the uh, Cambridge uh, conference on Saturday, and there was some discussion of um, Russia actually hoarding um, mining machinery, having banned it in January, uh, and now hoarding mining machinery. Um, so obviously, that the, 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 I think legislators may want to take a look at that um, sort of uh, issue. Um, and uh, just also the idea that actually the the total amount of um, uh, cryptocurrencies traded through uh, ruble to, to, to Bitcoin um, was only, I think it was uh, around 9 billion rubles, which if one thinks about it, isn't, isn't a huge amount of, um, isn't a huge amount of, uh, of, of money from a state perspective. So, um, but I think, yeah, these, these are all very interesting um, and very new sort of fronts to a, to a, to a conflict. Um, so yes, yeah, so it'll be fascinating to see how legislators um, take that on over time indeed and, and i think we all have to we need to recognize that you know that we all need to play our part it's not just about um politicians it's all of us as as participants in a democratic state you know if we want to continue this way of life we need to defend it now you know in any in, in any shape or form so yeah no, i think that we'll see a, a huge change in, in terms of the interest of uh, the legislators in, in the weeks and months ahead mm. And um, Nassim, do you have any any thoughts on, on 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 that front? No, I think you have asked all the pertinent uh, questions. Um, can't think of anything at this stage. Thank you. <clears throat> Hand raised from Oit um, Sabo Ikboy. Okay. Morning and mm -hmm. thank you for your time. I just had a question regarding the legislation around, like you mentioned, around blockchain. And I understand the uh, modifications that come with the finance sector and crypto, but has legislation started to look at the need to put things in place for incoming technology and further innovation that spread across different use cases beyond cryptocurrency? I think it's just, I, I wish there were, uh, I have to say. Um, I think that would be, um, uh, one would hope that that would be considered. Uh, what concerns me is that it's usually not. It's usually a kind of firefighting situation. Something turns up uh, and suddenly, uh, at least here in the UK, you know, the, the Treasury or the FCA decide that we need to have a, a more robust regulatory framework. And uh, there is discussion, though, I have to say, about regulation, um, especially in the crypto field. And there has been a debate about how um, deregulated that sphere should be. I think in recent weeks that narrative will have changed. Uh, I, I have to be very open. I'm not one for complete deregulation. I think regulation is in its in, a, in its best form. It is is good not just for the sector but for society. Um, but I think you know there is discussion ongoing in the UK Treasury and with the FCA about future regulation. But whether or not most parliamentarians understand what that actually means. Um, I think most people who are involved in the sector, at least in the UK, would say that uh, you know there's some way to go in terms of their understanding um, and their ability to see that as a, a big political football, uh, given the present circumstances. Yeah, thank you very much. Well, Martin, thank you very much for your time. Really, really appreciate um, you coming on stage um, and giving us uh, your insight there. Uh, and uh, congratulations on all, all your all your doings. Um, it's all it's all uh, certainly for us very critical um, that we have uh, very solid engagement with government and um, and the legislators, as you say. Uh, and and at times like these, it's always very important to emphasise the democratic process. I think, uh, particularly given world events. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll end this session and uh, come back to you very shortly. Thanks, Martin. Thank you.